Thank you for joining this presentation by the U.S. Office of Management and Budget and its Interagency Working Group for Research on Race and Ethnicity. My name is Beverly Pratt, and I work with the Statistical and Science Policy Office of the U.S. Office of Management and Budget. The purpose of this presentation is to further describe Federal Register Notice issued by the U.S. Office of Management and Budget regarding the federal standards for maintaining, collecting, and presenting federal data on race and ethnicity. Before I go into the background and review process of the Federal Register Notice, including the now four areas under current review, allow me to review the action and summary of the Federal Register Notice in discussion. The Office of Management and Budget, or OMB, published a Federal Register Notice. This Federal Register Notice signaled a request for public comment regarding proposals received from the Federal Interagency Working Group for Research on Race and Ethnicity for revisions to OMB's Standards for Maintaining, Collecting, and Presenting Data on Race and Ethnicity from 1997. That being said, I will now discuss the historical context of and review process for the Federal Register Notice. This slide provides a brief historical context for the current Federal Register Notice under discussion. For example, in 1977, OMB published its directive, Race and Ethnic Standards for Federal Statistics and Administrative Reporting. Doing so put into effect minimum standard categories for the collection and presentation of data on race and ethnicity for use by all federal agencies. In 1994, OMB published a note of proposed review and possible revision requesting comments on the adequacy of the then current categories. During this time, OMB established an interagency committee for the review of the racial and ethnic standards, whose members represented the many and diverse federal needs for racial and ethnic data, including statutory requirements for such data. In 1997, OMB published revisions to the standards for the classification of federal data on race and ethnicity, which stemmed from the recommendations of the interagency committee for the review of race and ethnic standards. More recently, in 2014, OMB formed the IWG for Research on Race and Ethnicity to exchange research findings, identify implementation issues, and collaborate on a shared research agenda to improve federal data on race and ethnicity. The IWG comprises representatives from 10 cabinet departments and three other agencies engaged in the collection or use of federal race and ethnicity data. And most recently, on September 30, 2016, OMB published a note to signal review and possible limited revision of the 1997 standards within four specific areas. One, the use of separate questions versus a combined question to measure race and ethnicity in question phrasing. Two, the classification of a Middle Eastern and North African group in distinct reporting category. Three, the description of intended use of minimum reporting categories. And four, the salience of terminology used for race and ethnicity classifications and other language in the standard. In total, September 2016's Federal Register Notice received thousands of public comments during its 30-day comment period. Themes of these comments will be discussed later on in this presentation. Interestingly, however, approximately 1,240 comments related to additional minimum reporting categories for Asian detailed groups and Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander detailed groups. Therefore, the now four areas under current review for Federal Register Notice include 1. Questionnaire format and non-response 2. The classification of a Middle Eastern and North African race or ethnicity 3. Additional minimum reporting categories for American Indian or Alaska Native Asian, Black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, and White groups 4. Relevance of terminology now let's go into each of these four areas under review, one by one. I will start first by discussing content in Federal Register Notice relating to the review and possible limited revision of the traditional separate questions approach as compared to a potential combined question approach. The IWG is examining the current use of the two separate questions versus a combined question to measure race and ethnicity, and also recent empirical research on comparing the different question format alternatives. The current 1997 OMB standards state, quote, self-reporting or self-identification using two separate questions is the preferred method for collecting data on race and ethnicity. In situations where self-reporting is not practical or feasible, the combined format may be used, end quote. Captured on this slide is the current separate questions format. 
and captured on this slide is the current combined question format. The persistent problem and reason for reviewing the standards is that the concepts of race and ethnicity are fluid. Individuals may be from multiple different racial groups, but identify and present themselves as only one or two races. For some people, ethnicity is a distinct concept that is separate from race, and for others, race and ethnicity are synonymous. In data collection, this conceptual difference in understanding featuring separate questions for ethnicity and for race can result in large amounts of missing data and non-response for either the race question or the ethnicity question. Particularly, in some surveys, we find that many Hispanics do not provide responses to the race question or respond by reporting again that they are Hispanic. In these cases, race is imputed. During the 30-day comment period from September 30th Federal Register Notice, question format received approximately 94 comments covering four themes. The first theme was combined question support, receiving about 67 comments. These comments noted that the combined question format represents an equitable approach for obtaining data on all racial and ethnic groups. The second theme was accuracy and data concerns, receiving about 11 comments. These comments did not support either the combined question format or the two separate questions format. Rather, commenters expressed support for whichever format could increase the response and participation of their constituency. The third theme was combined question non-support, receiving about 10 comments. These comments did not support the combined question format. Finally, the fourth theme was civil rights, divisive, and confusing categories, receiving about six comments. These remaining comments touched on issues of civil rights enforcement and the confusing and general divisive nature of categories. At this point, the question format subgroup will continue its review of current federal agency practices to determine whether or how a revised question format might improve the collection, tabulation, and utility of race ethnicity statistics for federal programs and policies. In doing so, the question format subgroup has four areas of request for public comment. First, what factors should be considered when evaluating anticipated information quality? Should both magnitude and scope, that is the majority of collections, be considered? Should magnitude of the improved information outweigh the scope of the improved change or vice versa? What amount of improvement would be considered meaningful? How should an improvement in data quality in some federal data systems be balanced against decreased data quality in other systems? Second, what factors should be considered when evaluating anticipated feasibility? Should burden to local, state, and federal agencies be considered? What amount of costs spent to augment systems and labor hours to implement changes would caution against implementing a change? How should potential lags in data delivery be weighed? Third, what factors should be considered when evaluating anticipated cost of implementing a change? Should costs be weighed differently when experienced at a local, state, or federal level? How should costs of improving or failing to improve information quality be considered? Fourth, when considering information quality, feasibility, and cost, how should benefits and costs be weighed? In which cases would information quality outweigh feasibility and cost concerns? In which cases would feasibility and cost concerns outweigh information quality? Now I will be discussing content in Federal Register Notice relating to the review and possible limited revision of a potential Middle Eastern or North African classification and category. The 1997 standards delineate the aggregate reporting category of white as including people who have origins in, quote, any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North Africa, end quote. During the periodic review of the standards leading up to the 1997 publication, OMB's Interagency Committee for the Review of Racial and Ethnic Standards did consider the addition of a distinct minimum reporting category for respondents identifying as Arabs or Middle Easterners. However, the committee decided to not issue a definition or an additional minimum reporting category for this group, as agreement could not be reached among public stakeholders on the intended measurement concept and a definition for this category. Instead, OMB did encourage further research to be done in order to determine the best way to improve data for this population group. The MENA subgroup continues to research a Middle Eastern or North African, or MENA, minimum reporting category with input from multiple stakeholders. This is largely based on research and stakeholder outreach undertaken by the U.S. Census Bureau. 
In doing so, the MENA subgroup is looking at a classification of a Middle Eastern or North African category. If agreement upon the definition for MENA can be reached, with or without the requirement of an additional separate new minimum aggregate reporting category distinct from white, OMB would need to revise the current standards to clarify the classification and tabulation instructions. During the 30-day comment period from the September 30th Federal Register Notice, MENA received thousands of comments covering five themes. The first theme was MENA as a racially diverse ethnicity, receiving approximately 1,042 comments. These comments advise that people from the MENA region identify with many racial backgrounds, but no designation currently exists for them and they remain undercounted and underrepresented. The second theme was disagreement with the classification of MENA as white, receiving 19 comments. These comments took issue with the current OMB standards classifying people of Middle Eastern or North African descent as white. The third theme was classification of countries or ethnic groups as MENA, receiving approximately 1,347 comments. These comments concerned the specific countries or ethnicities that should be classified as MENA. The fourth theme was support for adding MENA minimum reporting category, receiving approximately 2,235 comments. Almost all comments received regarding this review area expressed support for an additional minimum reporting category for this population, providing personal and societal reasons for their support. Finally, the fifth theme was non-support for adding a MENA minimum reporting category, receiving 38 comments. These comments did not support revising the minimum standards to require an additional minimum reporting category for MENA. At this point, the MENA subgroup proposes that a Middle Eastern or North African classification is added to the standards. The classification for the Middle Eastern and North African population should be geographically based. The MENA classification should be defined as, quote, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of the Middle East and North Africa. This includes, for example, Lebanese, Iranian, Egyptian, Syrian, Moroccan, Israeli, Algerian, Iraqi, and Kurdish, end quote. In doing so, the MENA subgroup has four areas of request for public comment. First, if MENA were collected as a separate reporting category, assuming that separate race and ethnicity questions continue to be the standard, should MENA be considered an ethnicity or a race? Second, outreach conducted with the Israeli American Council and Jewish American organizations indicates that persons of Ashkenazi, Mizrahi, and Sephardi origin do not wish to be included in the MENA category as it directly identifies the person as Jewish. Moreover, experts at the U.S. Census Bureau's 2015 Forum on Ethnic Groups from the Middle East and North Africa expressed that those who identify as Assyrian, Chaldean, Coptic, or Druze would like to be included in the MENA category. Therefore, the MENA subgroup asks for public comment regarding the following question. Which, if any, specific ethno-religious group should be included in a MENA classification? Please note, the IWG will ensure that any proposed Middle Eastern or North African classification or category that could be constructed would be done so in a manner that does not violate Public Law 94-521, which states, in part, quote, Notwithstanding any other provision of this title, no person shall be compelled to disclose information relative to his religious beliefs or to membership in a religious body, end quote. Third, the subgroup has also observed from initial feedback that the definition of MENA may be misunderstood to include only persons who are foreign-born. Our intention is that a MENA category, should it be adopted, would include persons of MENA origins, regardless of country of birth. We are interested in receiving feedback as how to best communicate this to respondents. Fourth, what is the estimated cost and public burden associated with requiring an additional reporting category for MENA across federal information collections? Would a separate reporting category allow reporting of statistically reliable estimates? Would the size of the MENA group present confidentiality or privacy concerns? How should the anticipated improvement in information quality be weighed against anticipated feasibility and cost if the additional reporting category were encouraged? if it were required. 
Now I will be discussing content in Federal Register Notice regarding additional minimum reporting categories for American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, Black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, and white groups. The 1997 standards provide a minimum set of racial and ethnic categories for use when federal agencies are collecting and presenting such information for statistical, administrative, or compliance purposes. The minimum set of racial and ethnic categories include American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, Black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, and white. While the 1997 standards provide these categories, they do not prohibit the collection and presentation of additional detailed categories, as long as those additional detailed categories can be totaled into the minimum set of categories for comparison purposes. The current standards utilize the following description regarding the intended use of minimum reporting categories. Quote, in no case shall the provisions of the standards be construed to limit the collection of data to the categories described above. The collection of greater detail is encouraged, end quote, thereby encouraging federal agencies within the federal statistical system to collect detailed data. However, it has become clear that the 1997 description of the intended use of the aforementioned minimum reporting categories can be misunderstood, leading people to believe that they are the only acceptable reporting categories. Therefore, the subgroup is examining the language used in the 1997 standards in order to improve the understanding of the use of the minimum reporting categories. During the 30-day comment period from the September 30th Federal Register Notice, this topic received comments covering five themes. The first theme, receiving 1,274 comments, regarded collecting more than the minimum reporting categories. Such comments expressed support for the collection of detailed race and ethnicity data by agencies beyond the minimum reporting categories. The second theme, receiving seven comments, regarded changing the minimum reporting categories. These comments expressed support for a requirement to collect detailed race and ethnicity data beyond the minimum reporting categories. The third theme, receiving nine comments, regarded creating a uniform item for detailed collection. These comments express support for a universal race and ethnicity question and set of response options for collecting detailed race and ethnicity data as a solution to the confusion about minimum response options. The fourth theme, receiving two comments, regarded not changing the minimum reporting category standards. These comments indicated that OMB should not change the existing standards. The fifth theme, receiving six comments, regarded reporting as many categories as possible. Such comments expressed disapproval of rolling categories into all other races in reporting data and advocated for American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, and Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander categories be reported whenever collected. At this point, the Additional Minimum Reporting Category subgroup proposes that OMB issue specific guidelines for the collection of detailed race and ethnicity data for collections that are self-reported. In doing so, the subgroup has 10 areas of request for public comment. First, if issuing specific guidelines for the collection of detailed American Indian or Alaska Native race and ethnicity data, should OMB adopt the 2015 National Content Test or NCT method, which includes separately Navajo Nation, Blackfeet Tribe, Mayan, Aztec, Native Village of Barrio Inupiat Traditional Government, and Nome Eskimo Community. If not, how should OMB select the detailed race and ethnicity categories? Second, if issuing specific guidelines for the collection of detailed Asian race and ethnicity data, should OMB adopt the 2010 decennial census and NCT format, which includes separately Chinese, Filipino, Asian and Indian, Vietnamese, Korean, Japanese, and in other Asian category? If not, how should OMB select the detailed Asian race and ethnicity categories? Third, if issuing specific guidelines for the collection of detailed Black or African American race and ethnicity data, should OMB adopt the NCT format, which includes separately African American, Jamaican, Haitian, Nigerian, Ethiopian, and Somali? 
If not, how should OMB select the detailed race and ethnicity categories? Fourth, if issuing specific guidelines for the collection of detailed Hispanic or Latino race and ethnicity data, should OMB adopt the NCT format, which includes separately Mexican or Mexican-American, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Salvadoran, Dominican, and Colombian? If not, how should OMB select the detailed race and ethnicity categories? Fifth, if issuing specific guidelines for the collection of detailed Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islanders race and ethnicity data, should OMB adopt the 2010 decennial census format, which includes separately Native Hawaiian, Chamorro, Samoan, and an other Pacific Islander category? Should it use the NCT format, which includes separately Native Hawaiian, Samoan, Chamorro, Tongan, Fijian, and Marshallese? If neither of these, how should OMB select the detailed Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander race and ethnicity categories? Sixth, if issuing specific guidelines for the collection of detailed white race and ethnicity data, should OMB adopt the NCT format, which includes separately German, Irish, English, Italian, Polish, and French? If not, how should OMB select the detailed race and ethnicity categories? Please note, these are the examples used when MENA was included in the NCT questionnaires. When MENA was not included in the NCT questionnaires, the examples are as follows. German, Irish, English, Italian, Lebanese, and Egyptian. Seventh, what burden and cost would a federal requirement to collect detailed race and ethnicity data place on federal agencies, state and local agencies, private sector entities, and the public? How should this burden and cost be weighed against any anticipated improvement in information quality? Eighth, should federal agencies be required to collect detailed race and ethnicity data even when such data could not be responsibly reported due to statistical reliability and confidentiality concerns? If so, in which cases? What factors should be considered? Ninth, if OMB were to strongly encourage, but not require, collection of detailed race and ethnicity data by federal agencies, how likely are federal agencies to adopt collection of detailed race and ethnicity data? Tenth, if OMB were to strongly encourage, but not require, collection of detailed race and ethnicity data by federal agencies, what criteria should be used to encourage and evaluate conformance with such guidance? Now I will be discussing content in Federal Register Notice relating to the review and possible limited revision regarding certain terminologies used within the 1997 standards. Because terminology changes over time, the terminology subgroup reviewed the 1997 standards and decided to focus on certain areas for possible changes, including 1. Presentations of and terms used for the detailed race and ethnicity groups, such as the current designation of a principal minority race. 2. The wording of instructions for race and ethnicity items. And 3. The race and ethnicity terms used in items collecting federal data. In addition, the subgroup investigated clarifications of the current race ethnicity group classifications. During the 30-day comment period from September 30th's Federal Register Notice, terminology received comments covering five themes. The first theme, receiving 14 comments, was the use of terms race or origin, race or ethnicity, or categories. Such comments voiced uncertainty regarding the intended definitions of the terms race and ethnicity, disagreed with the current usage of one of these terms, or presented an understanding of these terms that is not consistent with their intended conceptualization as socio-political constructions, rather than based on biology, as ascribed in the 1997 revision to the standards. The second theme, receiving eight comments, was related to the need versus no need to change terminology. The third theme, receiving 24 comments, related to discontinuing the use of term principal minority race. The fourth theme, receiving six comments, was related to the use of the term multiracial in reporting. Finally, the fifth theme, receiving two comments, related to categorizing race ethnicity by geographic region. At this point, the terminology subgroup has six initial proposals. First, 
The subgroup proposes no changes be made to the current standards to specifically incorporate the following geographic locations into any existing race or ethnicity category. Australian, including the original peoples of Australia, the Aborigines, Brazilian, Cape Verdean, New Zealander, and Papua New Guinean. Second, based on analyses to date, the subgroup proposes more research and public input to be conducted to enable a fulsome consideration of adding more specific South or Central American subgroups to the current description of the American Indian or Alaska Native category. Third, the subgroup proposes that the duplicate category of Cuban be deleted so that the listing is presented according to population size. The subgroup also considered whether the current ordering of the classification list be updated to reflect current population size. As a next step, the subgroup will apply this rationale to the classification listing and determine the magnitude and benefit of any resulting changes. The results of this analysis will be shared with the public. Fourth, the subgroup proposes that the terms Negro and Far East be removed from the current standards. Fifth, the subgroup also proposes that race ethnicity coding procedures be documented and publicly available. And finally, sixth, the subgroup proposes clarifying the standards to indicate the classification is not intended to be genetically based nor based on skin color. Rather, the goal of the standards is to provide guidelines for the federal measurement of race ethnicity as a social construct and, therefore, to inform public policy decisions. In doing so, the subgroup has one area of request for public comment. Should Hispanic or Latino be among the groups considered among principal minorities? Would alternative terms be more salient, for example, principal minority race slash ethnicity? Hispanic or Latino usually is considered an ethnicity, while minority is usually used when referencing race. Changing principal minority race to principal minority race slash ethnicity supports the changing demographics of the U.S. population. We are almost to the end of our presentation. In order to close, let's talk about next steps. The Interagency Working Group for Research on Race and Ethnicity continues to deliberate. To be clear, the Interagency Working Group has made no recommendations to OMB at this time, and OMB has made no decisions regarding any of the areas under current review. Upon the posting of Federal Register Notice, it will have a 60-day comment period. We encourage any comments and or questions to be emailed to race-ethnicity at omb.eop.gov and or to be posted on the Federal Register Notices link on regulations.gov. Then, the IWG will review the comments received via these processes and will prepare recommendations to OMB. In doing so, those recommendations will be made available to the public. Thank you, sincerely, for participating in our presentation, and we look forward to hearing back from you through these designated processes.